All right, if you've just joined us, you're right on time for our conversation to start. And it's happening live here on the network service of the NTA. So to begin our conversation on Labour Party presidential campaign, let's take a look at uh, a background report uh, put together by our correspondent, Garba Mohamed Natala. Electioneering season is here and political parties have begun their presidential campaigns ahead of the general elections, scheduled for February 2023. The Labour Party, which is one of the political parties fielding candidates, has flagged off its campaign in Lafayette and Asrao State after visiting flood victims in some southeastern states. The presidential candidate Peter Obi and his running mate Dati Baba Ahmed, as well as their supporters, have gone all out to sway votes in their favour. Equally, selling their ideas and creating awareness on its party's position on numerous solutions critical to Nigeria's developmental challenges. It is time for you to recover Nigeria. Working towards ensuring success of the party, the Labour Party is optimistic to restoring Nigeria on the right trajectory if it emerged victorious. What are the issues in Labour Party's presidential campaign's manifesto? Is the party relying on only online or social media for its campaign? Guests on the program shall be talking more on the manifesto of the Labour Party for the 2023 presidential election. Many thanks, Natala, for that background up. With us in the studios, we'd like to welcome Mr. Julius Aburi, who is the national chairman of the Labour Party. Mr. Aburi, we're glad to have you this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Okay, Chris, go ahead. <laughs> now, also here with us in the studios is uh, Undi Kato. Uh, Undi Kato is the spokesperson of the Obidati uh, campaign organization. And they were glad to have you this Thank morning. Thank you for having me, sir. Okay. All right, so let's begin with the uh, chairman of the Labour Party, uh, Mr. Julius Abure. Mr. Julius Abure, it's uh, well over six weeks uh, since the formal uh, flag off of campaigns on the 28th of September uh, this year, according to the election schedule of the Independent National Electoral Commission. How has it been for the Labour Party? Well, um, um, we actually have flag off our campaigns in uh, Lafia, like you just reported. Um, by um, tomorrow, we'll be in, um, we'll be in Makodi, Benue State. Uh, on the tenth, will be in um, Abia. I will be doing the do on the on the eleventh, um, before the campaigns officially uh, kick started. Uh, you recall that um, a lot of party supporters even have started the campaigns before uh, the campaigns officially started. People uh, on their own started organizing. Uh, 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 one million match, two million match to show and demonstrate their support for the party. And now that um, the the campaigns have officially started, we have hit the ground running like you have seen. We are going to have uh, town hall meetings, we are going to have rallies, we are going to have uh, uh, road walks and so on and so forth. We, uh, I think we are up to the game. We are ready to um, 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 uh, move around, converse, support for the party. Our campaigns essentially are going to be centered on the issues uh, because there are a lot of issues, a lot of challenges that are faced by the country and the citizens. And um, we believe that we have the solutions to these problems. We have the answers uh, to the numerous challenges of the country. And therefore, we are ready. We are mentally ready. We are ready in all these ramifications. I will believe that Nigerians will support us because Nigerians are determined for change. Nigerians are ready. The mood of the nation is clear that um, um, Nigerians want changes. And uh, uh, as we speak today, we represent that change. I want to believe that um, uh, by the time we, the, the, the campaigns are concluded or by the time we move towards the conclusion of the campaigns, it will be very clear that... Um, uh, Labour Party is um, ready to govern and lead the people 
to Nigeria for a better life a better society okay how how would you evaluate the uh your your campaign so far uh, in in, ten, in terms of um uh content in terms of acceptability and um are we likely to see you gather more momentum or have you have you climaxed well campaigns have just started <laughs> and um, uh, we are going to climax uh, this is just the beginning and uh, um, as we, we've just done one campaign which is the flag off we have had although uh, we are we tend to approach the campaigns from various fronts various strategies um we uh, I'm, I'm sure that as we move towards uh, the campaign uh, we will uh, climb mass and uh, we're just beginning so what you're, you're just trying just, to gather momentum yes yeah, so we just the, started yes okay what are the issues for the labor party presidential campaign organization in the 2023 elections well um we're we're campaigning in a different way i'd say and you know i i saw conversations about the fact that we have more people in our campaign organization than anybody else um this is because there are a lot of people who have volunteered their time and energy and you have to put a lot of these people in spaces where they can actually work people are very concerned about the state of the nation people are very concerned about where we are going as a nation and what they are using is they're using the labor party and the candidates um his excellency peter will be as a conduit as you know a tool to get things done so they are all running through him and a lot of these people have put in their time their energy their own money this is not a campaign where you come and you you collect money or anything you come and put in your own your own there and a lot of these people are doing that and we're just moving um when when it when the first um, um pcc was inaugurated of course there were complaints and i would say that there would have been issues there but those are disagreements and i've spoken about this before one thing i like about the labor party is that look the leaders take absolute responsibility i was in the hall with comrade julius aburi that day he took responsibility remember for the pcc list he apologized it's my fault um his excellency peter obi apologize Do dr doin okupe apologize and all of us were like look we understand that the list may not satisfy everybody and we're going to go back and look at this list and make more inclusions but again at the end of the day is in any way you are any part you're playing is very important for labor party the the goal at the end of the day is number one to win this election to ensure that peter will be the most capable candidate the person who has made this election and i want us to, to be very to be very clear on this has made this election about the issue wins this election because we need a better Nigeria and that's that's just it with the PCC this is not a reward list this is not a my these were my friends we served here no this is who can get the job done who has been doing the work before the PCC even came we're putting these people in places where they can function and even as we have put this the, the last list people are still not satisfied but what I like about it is even with these disagreements there's no we're going to destroy the Labour Party we're going to destroy the campaign because my name is not there people have looked at it and you know what even if my name is not there I can serve even if my name is not in the place where I prefer in the PCC I can serve and that is how we're moving forward Indeed, thank you and uh, Sorry, yes my, my please question had to do with the issues uh -huh, what exactly. for the uh, liberal party are the issues in the presidential elections next year uh, let's let's start with uh, the economy peter b has been very big on that we're having serious issues with the economy he has talked about the nera i mean we're looking at 890 i changed that 870 yesterday and this morning i'm hearing 890 we're looking at policies are you interjecting? Okay. No, well, I wasn't. I wasn't going to interject. I like. Just flow, okay. Just flow. We're looking at. We're looking at policies that are keeping the naira where it is. Uh, we're looking at. He's talked about agriculture as the new gold, right? And um, these things have their intersection. I mean, we, we want people to go to the farms. We want people to farm at such a commercial level that makes people even in the rural areas wealthy enough to sustain. But then there's the issue of insecurity, and he's talked about tackling insecurity. He has talked about revamping the police force. He has talked about restructuring the police force. He has talked about state police which is very big on that look we need to know the police that 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 are um, that are policing us people who are around us all of that the police force needs that he's talked about buy more weapons and to be honest we're seeing some improvements in the military right but more can be done more can be done towards the standard of living more can be done for weapons more can, can be done for operations um, on, on ground he's talked about that education we have 10 million autos in fact that has grown this is a this is an old statistics i'm using it, 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 it's 
now 20 million. Most of those 20 million are girls. And as a woman, that really concerns me. Now, getting these children back to school is imperative because you can draw a straight line from the out of school children in Nigeria to the terror we are facing right now, to the insecurity, because of course, then I do mind people who are not put into productive work who would have problems with that. The Peter Obi campaign is concerned with that. Health very important we have one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the country when he was governor of anambra state he revamped hospitals even the private ones even the ones owned by religious organizations he revamped these hospitals he was he paid close attention to primary health care centers and as a woman ma you know that this is this is where women give birth the most we need to pay attention to primary health care centers we need to build up these places stock these places ensure give our doctors good living conditions so that they don't have to flee this country where well, I, I think the number of the, the ratio of i don't have it off the top of my head but ratio mm -hmm. of doctor to patient is really really low and it's really problematic we don't have enough doctors we don't have enough nurses and they are fleeing the nation and we cannot treat it like it's our right to just have them here mm -hmm. when we are not giving them a nation that and situations that make them want to work so healthcare is at the top of priority but as a woman let me speak for women's participation in governance right that matters a lot we are actually the first set i and anna kazori are actually the first set of women who are spokespersons I don't think you've really seen that in this country spokespersons for presidential campaigns his urge and his his push to make sure that there are more women in governance so that there is a balance in policy making there's a gender balance in law making all of that matters a lot to him and we've seen this through this candidate um if there are anything i've not touched on you can you can interject okay, and make that's, me that's, but that's, you that's have really the facts yes. so <laughs> no no i mean no, just, no, i understand give, no, give no, me no, any no, subject yes. and i will touch let's, on let's, it let's bring, in, let's bring in the chairman yes let's bring in the chairman because um uh, Ndi has said so many things, and I hear the same thing, you know, the same areas, the same concerns also being raised by the other parties. So, so I really don't know how to distinguish or differentiate between the Labour Party, the APC, the PDP, and all that, because you're all talking about the same thing. So what is your... Well, the, 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 the issue here, like I've said severally, is that uh, for the 2023 election, um, there are issues that are very key. You must take into account the character of the individuals contesting. You must look at the pedigree. You must look, must look at the competence. You must look at the health conditions. You must also look at the age of those involved in this election. Um, the the programs applied by 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 uh, is very lucidly captured as the key areas uh, because those are the thematic areas that you find those are the major challenges that we face in the country and of course um, um, the campaigns will be based on the challenges that the country is going through which has to do with insecurity healthcare poor infrastructure and all of that but what is key here is that we must look at the character, the antecedents of these candidates that are running for election next year. It is key. It is key. We say so because we believe that it is if you are aspiring for an office, we must look at what you have done in the past. We must look at your antecedents. Where have you led before? What, how did you lead the people? Because we all, we have heard a lot of stories. We have heard a lot of uh, manifestos in the past. And what is even more is that if you have tried the products for one year, two years, three years, four years, and the product is not giving you the result that you deserve, common sense tells you. That you need to change that product and is, the product is, is, here, is this what you're and, is and, this what you're selling to yes obviously it's, it's part of it yes pdp apc is a product we have had for more than 20 years and if we are not getting the desired result what we are getting is insecurity hunger poverty and unemployment we need to change that product and we think that labor party is the alternative and we are saying so because Labour Party has the ideology, has the philosophy, and has the antecedent to be able to drive the process of Nigeria and then change the destiny and direction of our country. As we speak today, among the committee of the presidential candidates, we want to say clearly that Peter Obi stands out in terms of character, in terms of his, in terms of his performance and antecedent. And we must look at those issues critically. They are part and parcel of the program that we are going to look at because it takes somebody with character, 
pedigree and competence to be able to deliver on promises. In 2015, there were promises made to us. There were promises made to Nigerians. And those promises were not, were not uh, fulfilled. And today we are in for another election. And that's why it is imperative for the people of Nigeria to look at the character, pedigree, and competence of those who are running this election. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, National Chairman of Labour Party. One, one question to immediately ask is as follows. The Labour Party is not a new kid on the block. What has suddenly energized it? I mean, it's a movement when people look at uh, a system and say this is the best party that we want to use and take advantage of. Of course, in the past, this, the Labour Party is tied to a lot of um, movements for, um, you know, workers, uh, labor union and all of that. I think that it was important in choosing a party that Nigerians can relate to, especially in the struggle for a better standard of living, struggle for um, a better Nigeria. I think that was what informed choosing the Labour Party. It's convenient. It's a very, very convenient relationship. If you are with TUC, labor union, all of that, why shouldn't we go here? So it's, and, and remember that the key thing is a lot of the people who are supporting this have moved from activism and when this activism was happening many of the questions that were asked was towards what so at the end of the day when you take to the streets and you complain what is the next thing that you will do and um, people told us go and campaign go and do this and that is the next step that they moved from activism to let us carry this spirit of activism this spirit of dissatisfaction and channel it into a, towards getting something better let us put it in the politics that they asked us to put it and of course if you're channeling that you won't go to any of the old parties that you're complaining about you will look at somewhere where your activism can function properly and no other better place than labor party i think labor party is such an ideal place for what is happening right now young people feel, feel very comfortable with this system this is the system where these men are so accessible they are used to the streets and understanding the language of activism and this just this just really works i i i uh, kiss like you have a question for chairman i want to add okay please go ahead. well like um, she has said we we are not just new in government we're in government in all those states and uh, as of today uh, the government of uh, labor party in all those states is still claimed to be the best in terms of in terms of health care yes, in absolutely. terms of education in terms of infrastructure Go and find out when we were in government in all those states under Dr. Lucia Gumimiko, the World Health Organization declared uh, our health program as a model in Africa. And we did very well in all those states. And that was our starting point. And uh, we believe that this time around we'll be able to do better even than what we did in all those states. Mm. You, you use you cite on those states as. Um you know, one of your your positives, but you also contested in 2019. You, I mean, you had the ballot in 2019. And um, we, 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 we know that uh, the Labour Party, you know, uh, didn't quite uh, get any seats even at the, at the national level. So what, again, has energized you? What makes you, you know, believe that this time around will be different? We had because you, you are, you we, are we speaking, a, we you are speaking more about the integrity, about the pedigree of your presidential candidate. You are not talking about the issues and how you you are going to you know deal with those issues. Well, apparently, this is what mm, Nigerians want to hear. Yes, apparently because she has dealt with some of the issues. You know, the question he asked her was on the issues for this presidential campaign election, and because she already dealt with that, I felt that I should take it. From another point of view, which she didn't anchor and which we have dealt with. In 2019, we had a seat in the National Assembly. And of course, uh, democracy is about the people. Democracy is driven by the people. In 2019, the people may not have made the choice of Labour Party. But for 2023, the story is different. Today, Labour Party is the beautiful bride. And that is because they have tried other political parties and have seen that uh, there is no road. And so they have decided to chart a new way forward. And today, Labour Party is the is the party to beat. I can assure you of that. In 2023, and obviously you can see the wave, you can see the mood of the nation. You can see that the mood has changed. And apparently it is because the people are tired of the existing or the ruling political parties. And the people want change. And they believe that Labour Party represents this change. And of course, we didn't arrive here 
And by accident, we also have repositioned the party. We have rebranded the party. The ideology, the philosophy of the party is this state and is clear. And the managers of the party also have pedigree and integrity. And all of this put together is why the Nigerian people have decided to make it as an alternative like you can see. Today, Labour Party is the alternative to all others. Like she said, we represent the hope of the people of the generation of today and that is why the party is embraced by the youths by women all the vulnerable people in the society have embraced the labor party because they have seen that this is the new hope this is the change and i believe very strongly that we have the programs we have the ideology to be able to face the challenges that is facing the country like she has outlined the issue of security is key in the country today. Today, people can't travel even from Abuja to, to Lokoja, like you know. They see security everywhere. And security is key. And those are the issues she has dealt with. And like I said in my opening remarks, Labour Party campaign is going to be centered on issues. And if you have followed all our campaigns, our discussions, our literatures, they are centered on the issues of the nation. Issues that will move the country from consumption to production and so many other issues that we, we that we are going to put on the table. In fact, those issues are already on the table because even before the campaign started, we have been on and on and on discussing the issues and the challenges confronting the nation. And you talk, this is you just talk about the issues. Let's take, let's take the issues one by one. You yeah. you talk about the economy. You know, you've talked about, you know, how it has impacted the people, affected their way of life. So I want to believe that you do have a solid knowledge of, you know, uh, what is wrong with the economy. Would, do you blame or would you blame uh, the government in power for our economic uh, status today? Uh, obviously, if uh, the economy is not doing well, you blame, blame the government. If the country is not doing well, you blame the government. After all, the 1999 constitution makes it very clear. No, I'm, I'm, 17, just, I'm just I'm section specific 17, about the economy. Yes, section 17, yeah. section 14 of the 1999 constitution is clear that the national economy must be managed in such a way as to give maximum benefits to the people, to the people. And therefore, if uh, it's very clear that it's not my responsibility to manage the national economy. It's the, the responsibility of government to manage the national economy and mess our resources together, both human and material, and be able to um, um, position the economy in such a way that it will satisfy the yearnings and aspirations of the people. Like she rightly said today, the dollar is uh, going for uh, almost 800 naira per one dollar. Uh, inflation has uh, increased. When this government took over in 2015, the uh, inflation was double digit. Today, inflation rate is 20.8%. Uh, uh, that is double digit inflation. It's not my responsibility to manage the economy of the country. So obviously, the responsibility of government to do that. Today, there is high rate of unemployment. A lot of our young people are at home, no, no job. It is the responsibility of government to create the enabling environment and create job for the people of Nigeria. And we say clearly, clearly, that we have the human and natural resources to be able to rejig the economy and be able to create jobs, lift people out of poverty, lift people out of hunger, and reposition econ the economic fortunes of Nigeria for growth and development. So it's very clear that uh, the situation we have today is the fault of government. Government has not been able to amass our human and natural resources and reposition the country for greatness. <laughs> I mean, if you look at countries like Israel, Netherlands, name them who have excelled in their economic growth and development, do not have the natural resources that we have in Nigeria. Our land alone that we have not utilized is enough resources for us to deploy in conjunction with our human resources to be able to feed ourselves in the first instance and have sufficient to export. And by the time you are able to increase your, your export, of course, you have your balance of trade. And then all these crises in the economy that we have, 
will be able to deal with a lot of them. So obviously, I put <clears> the uh, the blame on the doorstep. The Labour Party puts the blame. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, when okay. I say I, I represent yes. the Labour yes. Party. And yes, okay. You okay. cannot okay. remove okay. me today from Labour Party. Please, Labour Party, please. Uh, uh, Undi, my, my question goes to you. Uh, we know that a key characteristic of Nigerian politics, particularly competitive politics, is its transactional nature. And a phrase that has been associated with the Obidati campaign is no she she. <laughs> How is that likely to work? in an ecosystem that we recognize and see and know to be highly transactional? Mm -hmm. um, the only transaction that is happening in the Labour Party is trust. That is the only thing we're transacting there. Trust and expectations and delivery. That's all. When it comes to money, no, that's not what we're doing. And, you know, it's it's funny because the way... The way media and i'm not not blaming you at all your questions are quite different but the way typical media keeps asking labor questions is taking us back to transactional politicking you know they keep asking your structure and they know what funds and fuels the kind of structure they are speaking about and they look at labor party and know that things are happening in a different way here in a way that money bags one money bag two money bags are not the big people putting money everywhere they see that things are happening differently but still want to ask us why it's not happening in the way that transactional politics is happening. And I think that what should happen instead is media should recognize that something different is happening. That for the first time in Nigerian politics, we're seeing, you know, a drop, a sharp drop in voter apathy. People are not only saying that we are going to the polls. People are saying we are willing to use our own resources for this campaign. We don't expect anything from the candidate. We don't expect any form of inducement. The only thing we are trading here is trust. Because of course, in the Nigerian political space, that trust deficit, Nigerian politicians try to cover up for trust deficit with money. That these people may not believe what I'm selling, but if I bring this, it will augment. So the reason why Labour Party doesn't have to is because the candidates, the products they have put forward, doesn't have a trust deficit. I always say this thing, that if we're going into an election and people are not emotionally invested in that candidate, in that election, in that course, I feel like it's a failed thing, that there is no point. So what Peter Obi has is something that most candidates do not have. That's emotional investment. And when you have that emotional investment, the issue of money back politics drops by the wayside. Instead of having to induce people, what we are having is that people are pushing. People are even pushing the Labour Party. You know how the kind of messages you see when you wake up. You're not doing enough. You need to do this. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. You need to, the same thing they do to the candidate. You need to do this more. You need to do. We're already doing this. They've gone 20 steps, 30 steps ahead. So that is not, transactional politics is not an issue for the Labour Party, but it's not just for the people who are, who are not, not just for the Labour Party itself. The truth is Nigerians are running through Peter Obi. If you go to the grassroots, I come from Southern Kaduna, what is happening there is absolutely crazy. People at home don't want to hear anything else. And when you have this kind of thing, money takes a back seat. At the end of the day, the little money we have is for logistics. You have to run here, do this. And most of the time, we even use our funds before your car go from here to here. You don't need anybody to fund you to do that. I saw in, you know, pe people that I would know that, look, before, before you get them to speak in politics, you know how moved, you know what. You know. Catch a knowledge is speaking for Peter Obi. And he's doing that with his own resources. So this is, people are sacrificing their time, their money, their efforts. This is not one of those. The only transaction, the only thing we are trading here is trust. So we have given you our trust. Then in return, you must deliver. Yes. That's okay, the, I, 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 go ahead. What must you deliver? Well, well, well uh, I just want to add to this. That transactional politics that we have had in the past is what has landed us into trouble. That's why you money backs hijack the political process, induce people with money. And of course, if you have invested so much in uh, getting to power, mm -hmm. the first thing you do is to recoup mm -hmm. what you have spent. Mm -hmm. And that is what the Labour Party is out to change. The founding fathers of Labour Party have always had this vision to have a party that is driven by the people, that is funded by the people, so that the people can own the party and own the process. And I want to say today that the people 
are the ones that are driving the process in Labour Party and they have, they have owned it. And what that does is that they have a stake in it. And for those that are going to emerge from this process, owe a duty to those who have owned this process to deliver. And what is that? Good governance and better life for the people. And so, uh, we rep and that's why we said we represent this change and you can see that the change it's a new dimension, a, a, a new twist in the political atmosphere of our country. It has never happened where you find that people are the ones driving the process and using their own resources to drive the process of growth and development for the party. It is a change, and I think that it's a positive change okay, that we need I'll, to promote. I'll, I'll, I'll still hold you on to the issues yes. and on the economy, because uh, you talked about, uh, you have mentioned about, you know, the uh, economic indices, which, according to you, and indeed, you know, it's, it's not particularly, you know, heartwarming. But again, it is a reflection of global trends. Now, you talked about... Um, uh, the value of the Naira on employment and harnessing human resources. How, for instance, will your party, you know, address the very issues that you have raised? Yes, first, yes. the challenges we have today that has uh, destroyed the economy is the issue of insecurity in the country. Um, a lot of our farmers who ought to be in the farm, even though it's small-scale uh, farming, are out of farm and they are hungry. So the first point to make here is to create and ensure that the country is safe first and foremost because without safety without security you can't talk effectively about the economy for instance <laughs> no foreign investor will come into your country where there is high level of insecurity so what is key first and foremost you must deal with the issue of insecurity in the country and they will begin to uh, create infrastructure and encourage people to go into agriculture, like one of the cardinal program of the Labour Party in rejigging the economy is agriculture. Because we believe that with the vast land that we have in the country and the huge human resources that we have, we'll be able to use agriculture to create employment and create jobs. And therefore, the government is going to create an enabling environment, create infrastructure that will enable people to be able to go back to the to the farms and be able to produce goods and services and use medium and small scale uh, businesses to grow the economy and reposition it for greatness mm -hmm. we believe that um, when people go into agriculture go into uh, processing and have sufficient goods and services for export it goes a long way in improving the economy of the country. The, the farmer had that clashes in parts of the country as well as the issue of even part of the issue of in the Boko Haram insurgents is because of you know competition for resources, land resources and all that. If you're able to address that, you should be able to get on with your you know program for agri. So how do you hope to you know tackle that area? Well for us we believe that uh, so far <laughs> the government have been paying lip service to the issue of insecurity. And we, we believe so very strongly. And we believe that if the government is decisive in terms of dealing with the issue of insecurity, especially as it relates to farmers and herders, farmers and uh, uh, herders clashes, it will, uh, uh, it will uh, um, reduce the level of uh, 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 clashes in these uh, uh, communities. Uh, we believe that we must employ modern methods of agriculture in terms of uh, 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 how do I put it now? In terms of uh, um, creating ranches and having mechanized uh, system of growing uh, crops and uh, and uh, taking care of uh, uh, animals. Uh, we believe that if this is done, it will go a long way in reducing the um, farmers and herders clashes that we have in the country. All right. I, I still would uh, like to return to a subject matter that has been talked about. 
2023, Nigeria will be going into the general elections. And with the exception of seven states, the general elections, of course, will be the presidential governorship. That's to say seven states are exempt from that. The Senate, the House of Reps, and the state houses of assembly. What is the focus of the Labour Party in the 2023 elections? Is it essentially the presidential or what? No, it's not essentially the presidential election. We have other candidates of the party that are running for uh, Senate, House of Rep, and uh, House of Assemblies. And I want to say clearly that uh, we parade the best of uh, candidates today. Most of them are young people, intelligent. Some of most. We also have seasoned politicians who are also running for senatorial seats. Uh, and House of Representatives, and therefore we are marketing all our candidates because we realize the fact that uh, the presidential candidate uh, won't be able to do it alone. And so we have a uh, uh, plethoral of uh, candidates who are running for elections in their various constituencies. Undi, uh, uh, is, this, is this of concern to you that the names of uh, the other candidates in the other elections do not appear uh, to ring a bell, do not appear, that's what I'm saying, to ring a bell. Oh, they, where I come from, they do. They actually appear to ring a bell. Young people are still carrying these candidates along. The key thing is a lot of these candidates, number one, have decided to be the people who are organizing at the grassroots level for the for the presidential campaign. So it's it's really interconnected. I mean, look at Abia with um, um, Alex Oti. Oti. I, I, I saw Otified and Obedient. You know, people are linking their campaigns to Peter Obi. Even people outside of Labour Party are linking their campaigns to Peter Obi. So you, you can imagine the, the advantage it is for those at the grassroots level. Um, in Kaduna, I mean, um, Jonathan Asake, he's really making waves there. Um, all the way down, we have people. In fact, they were, they were even pushing many of us young people because we are having an issue where I come from where, you know, the older politicians are not giving way. So Labour Party is looking like the place where if young people enter, they can actually get the opportunity to run for office. So that is not, uh, that is not a problem. These politicians are taking advantage of what is happening at the centre. They are keen into the movement. They are contributing to the movement and they would also reap from it. Um, I want to touch a little on the economy. Um, we still have issues with border closure, you know. Um, we can draw a straight line again from the policies of this government and where we are with the economy. Border closure, the forex uh, restrictions, and these two parallel markets that we're having are creating real issues for Nigerians. This is stopping business. This is pre preventing even SMEs from from being um, from 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 you know maximizing profits and then doing their work, and that is affecting at the end of the day employment rates, um, businesses. The economy itself. Are the borders still closed? Yes, yes, they are. In fact, to the point of people being attacked, the borders, the borders, to, to, are to the borders still to closed? Extent. Yeah, because I remember, I remember trying to, um, trying to. Well, let me not talk about this. It's very private, but um, yes, we still have issues with the border closure. I mean, they resigned it on it, but it is still people are still getting still getting harassed over this uh, at the border. At the same time, you may say, I've gone back on this policy. I think that was about last year they talked about it, but we're still having the effect. We're still having other countries who have closed their borders against us because of the borders that we closed. So that may still be the issue that Nigerians are facing with the border. It might not be that ours is closed, but on the, on the other end, on the other end, we have issues with Togo and the rest. Who, who responded to our own clo um, border closure by closing. And that is still, that's the point I was trying to make, that is still affecting. But even at the time that they did it for that long, it affected and it took the economy down. And you just wake up one day and say, well, we did this, but we're going back. That would affect the economy. Again, back to the NERA issues. We need to look at those policies. And we also need to look at policies that stabilize and create investor confidence. When I was in Ghana uh, last year, which is the story I didn't really want to share, that when I was in Ghana between 2020 and last year, I saw a lot of people who were working in Nigeria, a lot of foreign workers who are in Nigeria who have ported over there. Of course, they are having their issues now. But many of them said, look, our policies are not stable. The policies that affect the economy are not stable. And so back and forth, the government is doing this today. Tomorrow, they'll wake up and just do something that would, you know, just kill every work that people are doing. And I think that coming back and stabilizing our policies, ensuring that these things do not chase investors away, that there is trust in the system, that look, if I put my money into Nigeria, next year I'm going to see profit, um, that would work. I've seen the, the vice president talk a lot about ease of doing business, but implementation is key. You would say, oh, we are going to do this with CAC and all of that, but implementation for ease of doing business will, will ensure that more people are able to register businesses, start business. I remember the pre-2015 time how... The, how a lot of young people were able, Abuja blew up like 
the way businesses came up in all parts of this town and right now we are seeing a deep dive in that so we will create a conducive environment for businesses to be set up for businesses to foster that matters uh, that matters a lot I, I think I just wanted to, to mm -hmm. talk about and, and sorry for farmer for the farmer header crisis I'm very very big on justice um, the absence of justice, a, a, you know, the concept of justice in Nigeria has given people to interpret the laws according to how they deem fit. That if a thief is caught or somebody who attacks your community is caught and you feel that nothing is being done or you are calling and there's no political will to solve a problem, people then start to take it upon themselves that, you know what, we're going to form vigilantes, we're going to do this, we're going to fight back. So we're bringing back that concept of justice, ensuring that people, anybody, any side of the country attacks, wakes up and attacks a Nigerian, that that concept of justice is first and foremost and we'll bring that to the table i believe that with that we would have a, a great reduction in these back and forth attacks one of the major issues the country is facing today has to do with epileptic power supply some analysts have drawn attention to the challenges with the decomposition of the former phen or former nepa and they have the concerns also, if not suggestions, for a reversal of the privatization of the distribution end of the power value chain. Namely, that the discos have not been performing and we have seen how in recent months some of the creditors of uh, some of those discos have called in their credit and taken over those entities. What is the Liberal Party thinking of doing uh, in this regard? particularly at the distribution end of the power sector? Well, um, I think um, um, we need to even, um, beyond the issue of distribution, we also have uh, the major challenge is even with uh, generation. Uh, if as at today we generate uh, 4,000 megawatts for a country of over uh, 200 million people is grossly even inadequate and so i think that the starting point is to increase uh, power generation uh, we need to generate more energy for people to be able to 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 use um, um, and to this end uh, we are going to employ uh, renewable energies and then decentralize the process of uh, uh, power generation because we believe that if you allow more people to be able to generate power and uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, have more uh, power generation and once you're able to have this you should be able to also improve on the issue of uh, uh, distribution of uh, um, uh, power and uh, we think that even the privatization itself that led to the creation of some of these uh, uh, companies were all shrouded in uh, in uh, in uh, corruption, and uh, a lot of these companies are out to uh, out to make profit and what they can get almost immediately. So I think that a comprehensive review of that sector is necessary in order to be able to uh, have uh, the best from that sector. So a comprehensive review of the policy on um, generation and distribution is key to success. When you say a comprehensive review, the issues are fairly straightforward. They are right there on the table. This, they are founded in law. Uh, Jenkos, they have their, uh, they have their uh, agreements. Uh, TCN, which is the transmission company, it's also there. They have some investments now. TCN belongs to government. Uh, and then you have the discourse. Uh, some of the greatest complaints you have, I don't want to get into the retail issues of whether you have a meter in your house or you don't have a meter in your house, or whether the TC, sorry, the, uh, the discos are having enough investments. What will Nigerians uh, uh, expect from a Labour Party administration? Uh, will Nigerians still be paying for darkness uh, when uh, we don't have light? And then, of course, you get bill for it. What is going to be the game changer in the power sector? Indeed. So, I mean, um with retrospect to that, I think a good example I have is in Joss. I spent some, some part of my life in Joss, and there was something called disco. And that is when we talk of this um, decentralization of uh, power generation. Disco, I don't know why it didn't spread, 
but there is in the part of joss in rayfield there is there was disco that was allowed many many years ago and that type of joss actually had 24 hours light for most of the time they would come and say they want to do um maintenance every tuesday so we're going to take light for one hour and but apart from that so i think that that decentralization is key allow more people to generate we don't all have to depend on the tc and we don't all have to we can break this down to smaller companies to get this and uh, this work done that's what is important for me and again i think that uh the political will to pursue those who are hindering is is a problem for me I, I don't like persecution all the time but the truth is if we break this down we can't also allow nigerians to be at the mercy of a few uh power heads who can do as they wish so in terms of implementation it must be key that policies will be made to break down the ownerships of these things in a way that look uh, nigerians can co-own and people have a right to say what happens in these spaces but i would say that we would use the example of disco in just when you have smaller companies able to generate away from the big system i think that we have more productivity not just more productivity people are able to approach these companies better for customer service and all of that so we need to treat this as private as possible uh, make it as private a company as possible to ensure that we have like a lot of the things still hooked to the government even though we say is private is a problem for us and if this is something that private hands can handle better the more we privatize the better mm -hmm. all right uh Indy, thank you and uh the national chairman please uh let's just uh, take a short break when we come back we we'll continue our conversation thank you so Alright, welcome back. If you've just joined in, you're watching Good Morning Nigeria Live on the network service of the NTA. And on the hot seat today is the Labour Party. We have the national chairman here with us, as well as the spokesperson for the party. So let me again uh, take uh, Indicato. And I, 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 I want you to speak to us on import substitution, because the presidential uh, candidate for the Labour Party has been very, very, um, you know, uh, heavy on, you know, re I mean, you know, resuscitating our national, you know, resources, our industries, our economy, you know, he's been talking about how to rejig production, you know, capacities and all that. But if you look at our, you know, public debt profile, as at June 30, uh, you know, from the data we have, it's 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 over 40, uh, 42.84 trillion. Yes. Yes, and yet he's talking about import substitution. I, I'm wondering how, how does he hope to do that in terms of funding, in terms of financing, you know, uh, 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 his uh, projects. So I, I, I think at the end of the day, when we sort out the economy, um, there are some of these policies that I don't think that we enter and just jump to. One thing has to come after the other. Um, before we get there, we have to look at exports. We have to look at other things that are going to put us up to speed. Um, one of the good things that Peter Obi is known for, of course, is number one, finding this money from where there is none, creating and saving this money. So I think that once we enter this district... Is, is it likely to consider foreign loan? That is tricky. Now, with respect to Labour Party and Peter Obi's government, I don't think the question will be whether or not we'll take loans, but what the loans will be used for. So putting these loans in places where they would, number one, pay back themselves so that your children, my children and our grandchildren are not left with debt will be a major issue, right? That's, that's a focus. And if you borrow money, please put the money into something productive that would, number one, pay back that money, and number two, create more money so this it, and it all falls under the consumption to production thing that whatever we are doing is to make sure that nigeria produces more we need to produce everything needs to come out more and we need to do it 10 times ahead because we're really falling back so everything would be tailored towards that again it's not the question of whether we will take or not it's what is it going to be used for and i think that this is um we believe that this you know is why, the best way you know, to go you know why it has to be a question because at, at, at the moment um uh, there are concerns about a debt profile mm -hmm. and if your party is coming in and it's not giving us an answer and you're saying uh well we might consider foreign loan and all that i don't know <laughs> that's not chairman isn't it uh, a concern no it's a it's a major concern um generally um uh, borrowing without um uh, having um, without deploying need to productive ventures is um uh, uh, I mean, when you borrow to put to, to pay salaries, it's, so it's um, highly unacceptable to to 
to us and we want to even say that uh, all of this is as a result of the high level of corruption that you have in the country uh, i mean uh, today the we are not even to we are not able to meet the number of uh, barrel of oil we are supposed to even uh, export i mean the allocation given to us by opec and the reason they have given to us is that uh, uh, it is being stolen so i believe that Part of the problem we have in the country is the insincerity of people, of our leaders, and the issue of corruption that is around the issue of even the money borrowed. Because some of these money borrowed are not properly even accounted for. You can't account for all the monies that we have borrowed. And so the issue of accountability, the issue of transparency are all key factors into all of this and this brings me to the point i made earlier that this is why the issue of trust that she talked about the issue of character the issue of competence that we spoke about initially we all come to play in uh, all of these issues i i believe that the starting point is, is for us when when we win and we are in government obviously we'll be able to um, um uh, deal with a lot of these issues. So, so ju just before we focus, look up the the Labour Party may consider some foreign, you know, uh, support, financial support for takeoff. If there is financial support, why not? Mm. Support why in not? terms of loans. I just want to know how you, no, you intend to. Business, on what basis mm -hmm. would the party be seeking? Uh, for a low of for loan. Uh, yes. it will be uh, challenging. Yes. Yes. No, I said if, if they do, if they do get elected, if they do get the ticket, that's what I'm saying. Mm. If you do, because I, I, I've, I've just said yeah. that even the quota allocated to us, to uh, 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 quota allocated to us by OPEC to supply. Uh, uh, crude oil, mm. we are not able to meet that quota. That is red then you in itself. If you have your revenue you don't need loans and i'm saying that our system is shrouded in corruption and it is part of the problem that we have and i want to believe that by the time labor party is voted into office and there is transparency you may not even need some of these loans in the first instance okay uh, uh national chairman of labor party uh, thanks a lot for your explanation I, I want to come back to an issue yesterday the Presidential Campaign Council of the Labour Party announced that thenceforth its presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, would no longer appear on uh, any debate platform or any other platform organized uh, and where other presidential candidates themselves are not present. What has led to this drastic step? It is the backdrop that delegation it's not altogether uh, anathema to uh, uh, processes and procedures, indeed. So, um, we, we had an experience a couple of days ago, or was it the day before yesterday, yes. um, where um, there was a debate and uh, there was a town hall meeting with uh, another TV station and uh, one person was in no-show, uh, one of the major presidential candidates was in no-show, another sent a representative. Now, more than anything else, Peter Obi has been that one candidate that has brought the election back to the issues. If Peter Obi was not running in this election, what we'll have been doing is you see one candidate running around the field and um, the most fit. The other one would take picture with his guys, in, with his friends in Dubai and say, look at us, we are all together. You know, we would have been dealing with non-issues. But Peter Obi has made this election. This is why we're asking the tough questions in this election. He has made these elections about the issues, about the nitty gritty, about the how that things are going to happen. And it's, it's even tough for us who have to represent because every time you go out, because this man has said so much, you also have to prep yourself to say so much because there's so much expected of you. That's what the elections have come to. And because of that, so much is demanded of candidates. But what is happening is that we're seeing candidates trying to back off. And they're trying to back up from this responsibility of speaking directly to the people, explaining to the nation. And you know what? Doing a campaign season, a, camp a candidate cannot do it enough times. If it's 100 times, you have the opportunity to tell Nigerians. It's an election for the most populated black country in the world. It's a serious issue. It's a serious time. So if, it's, if NTA calls you 100 times, you should show up 100 times to tell Nigerians what you're going to do. But what happens at the end of the day is when one candidate is presenting himself over and over again and the others are not, and we are accepting it as normal, it downplays the importance of what that other candidate is doing. And so you would say, 
that look, this is disrespectful, not just to Peter Obi, but to all of us, to the entire media. If you put out for somebody who wants to rule Nigeria, who wants to take this country forward if they are being sincere, and you say, come and talk to us, and the person refuses, and as NTA, you say, that's okay. You are normalizing it. And we are trying to move away from that kind of politicking. I, I was so upset that day when this happened uh, in, in Transcorp. And I'm still, I, I stand by that decision too. That if we are going to make this normal and somebody will send a representative, well, Peter Obi might as well send me. I can speak. Let's not play that game. But if you say you're going to, oh, this is going to happen and let's just continue. We are then taking ourselves back. We're saying all the hard work that has been put to make sure that elections, we have come a long way. The elections about the issues, about, about <coughs> what Nigerians want. And these people must be tasked to tell us over and over again so that we can grab them by the collar when they do not deliver. And we hope that they do. And you say, oh, it doesn't matter if it doesn't come. Let's just put somebody else. You're taking us back. So we as a campaign organization, we are deciding that we're not going to let that happen. We are constantly leading the way in this. And we're trying telling Nigerians this is the new way of getting things done and we're not going to allow other people get away with it and if it is that our candidate is going to take a, a huge um, stand on this and say if the others do this I won't show up so that you know it puts the TV stations it puts the media to task to know that okay we need to take this seriously and we cannot keep taking these kinds of things from these other candidates then so be it okay um, some of your critiques you know uh, make reference to the uh, your social media presence mm -hmm. and describe you know the ubi movement as a social media campaign uh, i'd like you to speak to that and then i'd like to also uh speak to I, I i'm wondering might history not repeat itself because a movement like this also happened in the you know just before uh uh independence you did what when you had the zik movement mm -hmm. And of course, uh, it attracted a number of youths, you know, very vibrant youth movement. And it was, mm, uh, but it didn't, it didn't, um, it didn't survive. And because uh, some members of, you know, Zik's party weren't in support of his kind of movement. Again, because of, you know, Zik's, uh, 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 um, uh, the area where he came from, do your party, or does the Labour Party have a structure that will make it a pan-Nigerian party? Yeah, uh, let me start with the social media um, issue. See, behind you have WhatsApp on your phone. I think I think you you have WhatsApp. You probably have Facebook. There are faces behind social media presence. There are actually humans behind social media presence. And to show how important social media is, these other campaigns dedicate a lot of money to this uh, to these things. I mean, I've witnessed other political parties and how they function. They dedicate a lot of money. People come up in in Hausa. We call them young Katsua. They come up and you know bring big proposals. This is that can deliver social media space to you because they know that it is important. All the candidates, including even Bola Ahmed Tinubu is now on Twitter. He's has had to verify his handle so that people know his name. Everybody is there. Governments are there. All of that. And you're seeing the same social media where they, 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 um, Arab, Arab, uh, uprising. Arab Spring. Arab Spring. You know, that was the major thing that kickstarted it. And when it comes to Nigeria, like, no social media, how can, no. These are actual people. And these people behind these pages, when, when this movement started, even I was in Asia, when this movement started, this thing was four people in a room. Just young people making noise. And at every step of the way, there have been doubts. And every time there are doubts, these young people show you that, no, we can't do this. And like, oh, it's just four people in a room. More young people showed up. Then they said, you people cannot organize outside of this. And they blew it out the park. Rallies that parties have to spend so much, millions upon millions of naira to mobilize for. Young people mobilized themselves and came out for free. So we're moving now to the next step, town hall meetings. They will show up for free. You would even have people donate the, the venues for the town hall meetings. Door to door, young people are treating it as fellowship. The same young people who, are, who live multifaceted lives. They are students, even the oldest. They are students, they are, they are people who have their own jobs, who have their businesses, people who are suffering from a bad nation. All of these people also have WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook. They are the same people. They're the same people. And it also makes me wonder when we see people that, you know, when you know that a campaign is organic, is when you see, they, you don't see uniform inside. That somebody will come with their blue shirt. This one wear white. You see. Because this, you are just coming out of your homes and flocking. But by the time you enter, you see a stadium and you see this, this group of people are wearing orange shirts. This group. This mobilization. 
So we are seeing something new happening. And I want us to key into that to understand that there is power in social media movements. And that social, this social media movement combats to street movements. It's on this same social media and INEC has been held to task and has been told you, you have to do the right thing over and over again. It's on this social, uh, this, this same social media, young people rally towards increased voter registration. We had such a sharp increase in voter registration. They were going, talking from social media to, this is the place we are going to register. I like, we need a new registration center here. We need a new registration center. I'm going to carry my laptop and go and help do registration for people. It's from the same, so we cannot downplay something so important. Social media has led to government change in other countries. Nigeria is not going to be the first. We should look at it and say, you know what, we are happy that the space for people to be heard and to do things has been democratized and people can scream from anywhere we should be more happy than questioning it and then um the pan, pan nigerian outlook so um with respect to that i mean all of us told you i come from kaduna and the movement has caught fire there you saw what happened in plateau state i mean there was even an old woman mama was praying for for be it has it has really gone beyond um um what what we think the other day i was listening to a phone call between um between a supporter of the party and the daughter of a former president of uh, Northern ex uh, Extraction. And she was saying, look, she doesn't like what is happening in the country. And she's willing to put, I think she's from Sokoto State, she's willing to put in her effort to make sure that this um, that Peter will be wins this election. So I think that at the end of the day, you know, people, people, candidates will sit down and say, one candidate will say, ah, you know, this uh, Yoruba Lokon, I have the Southwest, you know, I, say, I have the North, you know. Peter Obi is not a regional candidate. He has widespread acceptance. Nigerians want a change and will continue to push. And we are treating this election like evangelism. Preaching, a scriptural union, uh, what is your Jehovah's Witness, door to door, person to person. So if you have not been converted yet, after this, after this TV show, me, I'll still do my work because I have to. And still preach to you the way we have been preaching to everyone. <laughs> okay. well, uh, thanks, thanks. I, I just also want to uh, get to your comments on this and how concerning it is. Because there have been reports, for instance, of the destruction of posters, billboards, mm -hmm. and other campaign materials uh, of political parties in states where they are in opposition. Uh, there are also some hidden fees or charges being for, uh, uh, levied for the use of billboards or location of billboards. Uh, there was a report at the weekend of uh, some gentleman who was trying to tear down the campaign material of another political party and he was electrocuted. How concerning is this uh, to you, for instance, as Labour Party, you're not in charge of any state? It's, it, is, it is quite concerning, but it, it shouldn't just be to us, it should be to everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Don't to us. The, the, I was going to say, because we're one of the biggest victims of this. Our young people, those carrying the flags, have been beaten. But you know, it's that spirit of resilience. Our posters have been turned down. You've seen state governors at our billboard. Young people have been complaining up and down, but we have not stopped. Is it concerning? It is entirely concerning. And I think that it shouldn't just be that, oh, as a, as a political party, Labour, are you concerned? Any right-thinking person should be concerned because this affects the quality of our elections. All the candidates have gathered and signed a peace pact. And so for, for us to see that it's only one side that is really, really speaking against this. We need more people speaking against this. The thing with politicians is they don't understand how transient, how fickle power is, right? So because I have it today for these four years, I'm going to do and undo. But the next four years, you may not have it. The former ruling party knows what they put in place, that they thought, you know what, we're going to have power for a long time, so let's keep doing this. But now that they need some of these strong systems for themselves, the strong systems. And, okay, so and let, like let's give the national chair and uh, uh, tends to also say his own last words. And the question will be uh, that the Labour Party is supposed to be a party for the workers. And I'm wondering if you do have, <laughs> if um, that acceptable is your party to, to, to the Nigerian workers. So obviously the Trade Union Congress and the Nigerian Labour Congress is working in tandem with us. If you look at the campaign council list, it's populated also by workers. The Nigerian Labour Congress, TUC, they all have nominations on that list. Uh, workers are in this project. The, uh, there's even a, 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 a program designed that is uh, worker to worker. Uh, that program will uh, ensure that one other worker will bring another 10 workers. And by the time we run that for another two months, 
there's some few workers who are still sitting on the fence we key into this project so uh, those driving this process are really uh, workers and unionists uh, and so we have the support a major ally a major supporters of the workers of course uh, you know labor party is the party for the working people and the working people are driving also driving this this process uh, as national chairman i rose from the ranks of the labor union i was a worker and uh, a national president of post and telecoms nighter and so that was where i rose from so um, a lot of workers are in support of this project and this project the, the labor union themselves are key stakeholders in this project and so we have our major backers and our support from the working people of nigeria and of course the bear the brunt the uh, harsh economic conditions today your salary can't take you home 13 other minimum wage can't take workers home and therefore no, workers no, are not by one side in this project nobody here earns 30,000 naira. no i'm just using that as uh, yes, yes, yes. So yes. Let's, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when we are saying this, <laughs> this shit, there are people who are on but but people, the minimum wage it is a minimum wage but that's not what anybody here is and including our cameraman <laughs> And others, I'm sure they are, they are all smiling. I mean, because our viewers can't see their faces, they are all smiling. They say, Look, uh, Christy, don't go and spoil our marketing. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we'd like to thank our two guests uh, who've been with us uh, this morning discussing the uh, campaign of the Labour Party. Uh, Undi Kato, spokesperson of the Obidati Campaign Organization. We appreciate your being with us on the Thank program this me. morning. We also would like to thank Comrade Julius Aburi, uh, National Chairman of Labour Party. As we stay to all, all others who have been with us on this program, best wishes. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's go back out to our sports desk.